Hello and welcome to Unbounded Grow, a podcast that challenges you to grow and become a better version of yourself. My name is Mark Allen, and together with my friend Adam, we share thoughts and ideas from the books that we read and how they enhance our personal growth and development. We also host other readers and leaders. We learn from the experiences through our discussions. Our episodes air every Tuesday at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for listening in and let's grow together. Unbounded Growth. Hello and welcome back to Unbounded Growth. My name is Mark Alan Muteba. We are continuing our journey with Atomic Habit, uh, the Atomic Habits that we hope to, to end either next week or the week after. We will also be having a guest next week, something we're excited about. This is the eighth episode of our second season. And I'm here with my friend and co-host, Adam Shebindu. How are you doing, Adam? I'm doing well, Mark. How are you doing? I am doing a lot better. I finally let go of all my crutches and I've been working oh, that's, crutches that's for very eight. good news. <laughs> and it, it you know, it feels it feels unreal. It's just like wow, I can't believe I can walk again, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but but yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a long journey. But other than that, uh, I'm doing great. So we are still uh, talking about uh, atomic habit. Before that, a few a few announcements. Our uh, our giveaway is ongoing right now more details yes Adam? um yeah definitely so we are doing we we have posted it on youtube we have posted it on instagram and on linkedin uh, the, um, the social media that we use for the podcast uh to reach more people and um it, it's been great so far we have about 14 responders on on our instagram and and um we have still have yet to check on linkedin but um feel free to um Go on our Instagram if you're listening from anywhere in the world because this is an opportunity to get something for free. It's a giveaway, mm -hmm. so you don't have to give anything back. Uh, all you need to do is just go on any of our pages, follow us, or subscribe to our YouTube channel. So if you can either subscribe or you can just follow us on LinkedIn, follow us on Instagram. And once you've done that, in the comments under the post that's... Um, under the post for the giveaway just tag three more people that you would like to grow with next year in 2023 so once you've done that you like the post you share the post with your your network and um tag three people and um don't forget to follow us and that way we can keep track of who did it so whenever we are doing the raffle we can see who well, won the um, the gift card if you're outside the country or the um, the the headsets, the um, book Atomic Habits, and also the James Clear special journal. And that special journal is we help you in 2023 to track all your habit. And the winner will be announced on December 25th. So make sure that you are. Uh, uh, you continue to do that. You continue to share so that we we can keep track of your name, and then uh, we we have some fun. Uh, we hope that you you will join us in this journey in 2023 and continue to grow with us. That's that's what we desire. That's our goal. So last week we started talking about uh, the third law of behavioral change. We we've talked about atomic habit, which is clear how to to create habits that last, how to create change that that's that that, that last, you know. And we say that James Clear gives four different uh, laws for habits creation. He talks about making a law obvious, uh, <laughs> making the habit obvious, uh, making it attractive, and then making it easy. And the last one is making it satisfying, which we talk about in the next week or the next two weeks. Uh, we've already discussed a lot in depth about how to make a habit obvious. You know, we've talked also about how to make your habit attractive. So you actually want to do them. And then we started talking about how to make the habit easy. And, and, and last week, we, we, we started just diving a little bit into it, uh, talking about chapter 12. And then today, you know, again, a, a little reminder about last week, we talked about, you know, how quantity uh, is better than quality when it comes to habit creation. Don't, don't try to find until you get the best habit in order for you to start moving. And then most importantly, we talked about the law 
of the least effort. And we've talked about this in, in this um, in this podcast before, where human beings naturally gravitate to things that are easier for them. And we showed you how the social media platforms have, you, have used this against you, but for their benefit. Like TikTok, you don't have to do highlights. You just have to scroll and scroll and scroll. It's easy. On Instagram, when they came up with, with Instagram in the past, what made it more popular was the fact that it was so easy to post literally three two to three clicks and your your photo was online and people liked it you know and when they added the endless scrolling it just kept people doing the same thing because we human beings our brain we always gravitate towards things that are a lot easier and we learn about how you can take those habits and make them easier for you so it's much easier for you to do those habits instead of trying to do a hundred push-ups every morning start with two you know, if you start with two, you build a momentum. And we talked about it again in the past about habit stacking. You know, after I wake up, I'll do two push-ups. After I do two push-ups, I'll do this. And you start stacking those habits. And the goal here is to make it as easy as possible so that it's not so that it's easier for you to, to adapt into those habits and you don't have any excuse to get into them. Today we, we start with chapter 13, and we are talking about men. This 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 is one of those that you you want to write down is how to stop procrastinating by using the two minute rule. Now there is an interesting factor that James Clear starts with here, and 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 Adam we we we, we give us some of his thought, and I think we Adam you and I have read it in Hyperfocus where fifty forty to fifty percent of of the habits of things that you do every day you do them unconsciously. It's just things that have been embedded in, in, in your brain. You don't have to constantly think about them. And you are just going on autopilot again, faster and faster. And think about it. If 50% of everything that you're doing today, 50% of all your habits, everything that you did today, you did not have to think about it. It means a lot of your time was gone toward things that you did not intentionally do. But what if you could even convert 25 or those 50% to do things intentionally? Like most of the times we pick our phones, we don't even think about it. Or we start calling or browsing on social media. It's like automatic. We are so used to doing it that we don't really spend time to think about it. Adam? Yes. Um, so this, as uh, Mark Ali just said there, 40% to 50% of everything we do, which means... You brush your teeth, you don't think about it. You take a shower, you don't think about it. Anything that you actually do, you do not think about it. And now the interesting part hmm. is the fact that the stuff that we do by habit are the one that determine what we actually now do consciously. Hmm. Think about it this way. You have a habit of picking up your phone, excuse me, for, a, a, let's say, one minute. Mm -hmm. Or you've coded in your mind, and this is something that I am actually working on myself. Mm. You've told yourself in, in your mind as, as soon as you get bored, and that's why in, in Hyperfocus you talk about it, as soon as you get bored, You've developed a certain habit of reaching out to your phone mm -hmm. and checking the news or checking whatever for five minutes. Mm. However, you did when you took your phone, you picked it up for the very first time. Mm. You did that consciously. Yeah. You wanted to do that because you were feeling bored. So you had to cure yourself mm. by giving yourself that remedy. But then when you think about it, um, by the time you actually do it, you have been there for 30 minutes, mm. scrolling one thing after another, and you lose complete, you completely lose track of whatever it is that you actually were doing, or um, you lose track of your time, and you have completely wasted mm -hmm. most of your time. Where, and it's, it's not just you, actually, it's 
most people. It's a most lot of us. Spend, <laughs> all of it's us. It's a lot of us. us. We, 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 we definitely so get many so hours. Um, personally, this is one thing that's, um, that I'm hoping to even grow into better in 2023. Oh. The fact that, and I've, I've been, uh, for me, I've made a very, um, I'm, I've developed a lot of intentionality on the fact of picking up my phone all the time. Mm -hmm. I have to, I'm starting not to think about it. It's because before it was just like, yeah, I'm bored. Or, I just feel like it just, you stop at this, at, at the red light. Mm -hmm. First thing, before even you can think about it, you've picked up your phone. Yep. Yep. You, and I've, I've been just tracking each one of them. Hmm. That's okay. What are the different things that are making me pick up my phone during the day? And what is the, that thing? And you see, co contrary to, I think most people who like maybe play video games on their phone or whatever. No, for me, I've been just gravitating on like, I believe four apps. Mm -hmm. I check my Instagram. I check my WhatsApp. I barely check my Facebook unless I'm very bored. <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, unfortunately, that's the thing about Facebook right now. Like yeah. nobody uses those apps, a lot of <laughs> Facebook anymore. So unless I'm completely bored, mm -hmm. I've been jumping from, um, WhatsApp to Instagram mm -hmm. with a, a little, like a, below that, the two other apps that take my time after WhatsApp and Instagram is my Twitter because lately you have everything happening in Congo. So I'm <laughs> trying to stay up to date every minute and Elon Musk sharing all this funny stuff all the time. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I haven't kept my eyes off of Twitter right. and then, and then Snapchat and Snapchat. I don't even have that many people on there. I barely even talk to people. Hmm. But just the fact that I check and I don't have any notification, I feel like you're missing satisfying. out on something. Yeah. Yeah. It's just satisfying. I check it. Mm -hmm. I don't have notification. It satisfies me mm -hmm. and I keep on moving. Now it, that has become a habit. Mm -hmm. It has become a part of my 50% of stuff that I do every day. Now, what I've, I've been actually starting to, um, to put it on now, imagine sometimes I'm starting to tell myself, imagine if instead of going on on on, on those like because the, my phone is a very powerful tool yeah i have tons of books on my phone like tons and tons of books you know the truth is and um, phones phones mm -hmm. are no longer what they used to be you know back in the days phones were pretty much for communication today we are carrying some mini computers in our pocket all the time exactly mm -hmm. so now And I think I lost Adam here for a few minutes. I believe that he'll be back. So uh, relating back to what Adam was saying about how sometimes our addictions can become really problematic is that in my experience, uh, James Clear talks about a very important point that I want to mention here. He talks about a concept of decisive moment. He said that we have, we all have moments in our lives that determine how our days is going to go. Those moments are usually that dictate if my day is going to go great or my day is going to go wrong. He gives this example about this woman who, who was really a great Olympic. Uh, and they ask her, how do you build your habits? She said, every morning I wake up in the morning and there is a few decisions, a few key decisions that I have to make in the morning. Now, in case I make a wrong step in the morning, if I, if I pick up my phone, for example, instead of putting up my, my gym clothes, my day is run completely. Completely. And my own experience, I've also I've also noticed that it, it usually happens on Friday night. I work from home. I work remotely, uh, full time, and I try to make my Fridays and Saturdays the most uh, some of the most productive days, because on Friday I have to uh, to. Uh, on Friday, I have to stop to 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 get off work, and then I, I know I don't have to worry a lot about work on Saturday. So I try to spend my Friday night studying, and then my my Saturday's morning just working and studying until you know my wife and kid I wake they, they they wake up a little late because they also go to bed a little some late. But but now, I notice that one thing happens every Friday. I am mentally tired of 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 the whole week, everything that has been going on during the week, and I'm mentally tired. But there's this point on Friday that if I, I, I take the wrong decision, it screws up not only my Friday, but it also screws up my Friday. This is what it is. If on Friday at 4 p.m., 
I'm tired. I go to bed and I wake up at 6 p.m. If I put on a movie on Netflix, that's it. My my my, my Saturday, my, my Friday can still be saved. I, I'll watch one movie, let's say from 6 p.m. to 8 30, 9 p.m. ish. If I don't stop watching Netflix at 9 p.m. and I decide, okay, you know, maybe I still have time for another movie. The moment I do that, I know that my day is screwed up completely because I'll watch a second movie at 9 p.m. and then a third movie at 11 p.m. and I end up going to bed like at 3, 4 a.m. in the morning. And if I go back to, if I go to bed at 3 or 4 a.m. in the morning, one thing is for sure is that the next day I'm not waking up early. And if I wake up at the same time with my wife and kid, I'm, I'm trying to be very intentional about spending time with family. I can no longer, you know, do the things that I want to do when I'm awake and they're still sleeping. So it's very crucial to be conscious of those decisive moments in your life. Recently, I started, I started, as Adam was sharing before, before he dropped off the call. Recently, I started, I started also realizing, you know, noticing how much I was struggling with my phone, you know, especially at work. And, and all the time, I think Adam is back. And all the time I was, I was struggling with my phone as well. Uh, don't, when, when, when I was at home and, and trying to work, trying to focus, trying to, to lock in to, to, to get some, some work done. And then I noticed one problem is that every time I got stuck on a problem or every time I was stressed or every time I couldn't figure something out, my phone, because you're sitting right next to me, my next intent, well, my next intention was just like, pick it up and check what's going on. And as Adam said, you know, the same, the same applications that I, I struggle with the most, I'm not, I'm not on most social medias. I'm not on Instagram. I'm not on TikTok. I'm not on Snapchat. I was on Snapchat when, it, you know, back in 2013 and I used it for like a week and I didn't like it, you know, but WhatsApp consumes a lot of my time. And sometimes, sometimes LinkedIn, you just go there and one thing will get you and you keep going. And before you know it, you spend 15, 20, 25 minutes. And one remedy that, um, that I started using, uh, I, was, I was sharing that with Adam uh, since, since we, we both were reading I, I Hyper Focus. Uh, the first thing I do now when I get to work, uh, and I can't even believe I, I'm able to do it now, but I turn off my phone. I literally turn off my phone and leave it in the living room. Now, with the injury, which was, was painful, but was, was also a blessing, is that I couldn't move as freely as I wanted to when I, before I got injured. So it, it took me a lot of effort, a lot of work to just get up and go to the living room with my phone. Now, I'm obliged and kind of forced that every time I'm, stu I'm stuck on a problem... I don't, I don't have my phone to pick and look at. Now I started filling my, my, my table with books. You know, I usually read two books at a time and, and, and I've been doing so bad with my reading lately. So now that when I'm stuck or I'm waiting on a build or I'm waiting on something, I'll just pick one of those books, start reading them. And by the time, you know, whatever I was, I was waiting for getting stuck, I haven't checked my phone, but at least I've, I've added to my knowledge. And that's one, my, my strategy of, of beating up the, the, the phone thing. And Adam, uh, when you dropped off, I was just talking about when James Clear talks about the decisive, decisive moments in our lives, you know, where sometimes it's, it's just that one time. If, if, you, if, if you are supposed to go left and you go right, can completely screw up everything else that you had planned. Yeah, definitely. And I think, and, and, and that's that decision on your board. Mm -hmm. What do you do with your time when you are bored? Mm -hmm. How do you, that's break in like the mental break that you take, the quick mental break mm -hmm. after working so many hours. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, it's it can be good to use social media, but not even you've been working, let's say, after, because we can only have a very limited attention span mm -hmm. as human. Yes. A lot of people cannot go more than 15 minutes just focused on something. Mm -hmm. But after those 15 minutes of focus, mm -hmm. what, you, what do you do with your time right after it? Mm -hmm. And that can be crucial mm -hmm. in deciding whether, how you can grow. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and it's just something that's, to me has become, it's become like a front, very front on my consciousness. And, and the other thing, Wait, Adam, I, you know, talking about that, uh, about what you do when you take that break, I think that the, in order for you to be successful at being productive, you have to be intentional about it, right? You have to think in advance, hey, 
now I work with a timer. There's, there's this website, I think it's called uh, Big Timer. Let me see. Uh, let me see. It's called BigTimer.net. It's pretty much an online timer. You can use a Google timer. I just like it because you can go full screen and it looks big on, it, it looks big on your screen and all that. What I do now, uh, you know, I was struggling with, with, with focus, right? It's like I can only focus for so long. You focus for 10 minutes and then something prompts you to pick up your phone or something like that. Now, I started, of course, I started with five minutes. I was like, okay, I won't touch my phone. I won't do anything for five minutes. When my alarm goes off, I'll put another timer for two minutes. I'll use my phone for two minutes and put another five minutes. But over time, as I was, I was doing it, I started about three, four weeks ago. Today, I'm able to go for 35 minutes of focus. At least 35 minutes of staying on my computer, staying on my code, and, and continue to look at it until until I figure something out. And, and and the point I was trying to add to what Adam is saying is just you have to be intentional about it. What is it that you're trying to break? And how can you go about breaking it? And that's why we've been we've been kind of you know <laughs> beating a dead horse by, by 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 now by telling you, listen, it's it's don't don't wait until 2023 to don't wait for 2023 to roll in for you to start working on your resolution or for you to even start applying the things that you are saying that oh from 2023 I won't do A B C D. Why what what is stopping you from from not doing it now? What is stopping you from starting to live 2023 in 2022? Yeah, and um, and just to transition what you just said, uh, you create a really good bridge to what he's saying next. Mm -hmm. Now is the two minute rule. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you start implementing a lot of these things? It's it, it it's simple. The two minute rule actually it it really does help, uh, and I've, I've I've been experiencing the the effect of this two minute rule. Mm -hmm. And. Um, <laughs> Surprisingly, you actually just won't do two minutes. You tell yourself two minutes, but you won't do two minutes. This is the thing I've been telling myself, and, and it's just a lot of. So this book, you can you know you can just follow up from the beginning. The, the stuff just kind of work with it, work itself out. Mm -hmm. So I've been I've been telling myself that okay, I'm, I've been pushing back the use of my phone for two minutes. Mm. That's something that I've been doing, and I'm I'm trying to to install it as a habit. Mm -hmm. Is that um, after two minutes, I am I'm doing an experiment. Like I will leave my phone in uh, like on my desk in my office, mm -hmm. and then I could I will I'm in the lab for two minutes. Mm -hmm. For two minutes only, um, I will be in the um, I'll be in the lab for two minutes. And then I'll come, touch my phone, look at whatever. But surprisingly, I won't be there for two minutes. Mm -hmm. I'll be there for way longer than two minutes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I can go even all the way to 10 minutes, mm. 20 minutes without my phone. But I told myself that it's just going to be two minutes. And uh, yeah, when I'm on my desk and my phone is right next to me, mm -hmm. I delay when I'm about to touch it, I just delay it for two minutes again. Mm -hmm. And be like, yeah, after two minutes, I'll go ahead and do it. That's one thing that has been helping. I mean, apart from, because I've, I've also applied, um, I've, 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 I've been struggling um, lately because I was applying the uh, Brian Tracy's um, like 90 minutes Roll. focus time. Mm -hmm. I've been, I was applying that, but it seemed to be very long. Mm -hmm to implement so and i think the just 2 minutes delaying a bad habit by 2 minutes yeah and or I, mm -hmm. doing a good habit by 2 minutes that's has really helped i think you grow you kind of grow into it because of course some days your momentum is good right you have a lot of motivation which does not require you a lot of effort into putting 90 minutes and, and just lock in and work uh i remember about 2 weeks ago I was able to work for four hours straight without looking at the clock, without doing anything. I was just, you know, testing some new equipment that we got for unbounded growth. And, and I was trying to figure to figure all this out. You know, I sat in my room from 8 a.m. to midday and, and I didn't even see the time passing because I was just so sucked in. But then when it comes to other stuff, it, it, it's more challenging. And and the, the idea that Brian Tracy is giving here, which uh, Dr. BJ Fogg also talks about in Tiny Habits, is that you make your habits when whenever you start a new habit 
you want to make it as easy as you can possibly do it in two minutes. If you're starting a new habit, just make sure that break it to a level so low that you can actually do it in two minutes. And and I'll, I'll explain, you know, to what Adam was saying as well, you know, like James Clear gives, gives, gives a few examples here. And I'll talk a little bit about tiny habit because I think that was the core of his book, tiny habit. You make your habit so tiny that you no longer need a lot of motivation to do it. So James Clear says, read before bed each night becomes read one page of your book. So instead of saying like, I'm going to read for an hour before bed, just read one page. If you can do a page, read a paragraph. You know, I think everybody can do a paragraph. Well, if you can do a paragraph, read a line, right? And, and, and I mean, if you can read a complete sentence, you can read every day before you go to bed. The second one says study for class becomes open my notes. And it, it's so powerful. Just sit in your room, open your note. You don't have to study. Just leave your phone away and just open your note. The third one, it talks about fold the laundry becomes fold one pair of socks. And, and I'm guilty of that. You know, our, our laundry stays in the dryer for, for you know, uh, until we do the next laundry. Then you go, oh my God. We see, <laughs> we see. And you know what? Actually, oh my God. I especially do not like doing laundry. I hate laundry. Um, <laughs> so one thing about me is that I hate laundry. And the reason why I hate it, actually, I don't get it right. Even <laughs> if I'm doing it in the machine, right. I'm either putting more soap than I'm supposed to be, more detergent, mm -hmm. or something always just happens to go wrong. Right. Every time I do laundry. So yeah, I've been also very guilty of leaving my laundry in the, for as long as I can conveniently. And actually when I was, um, when I was on campus and, mm -hmm. and I, and we're not, I was, I had so much space. It was just, uh, just me in the apartment. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, I was doing my laundry and leaving my laundry actually in the machine. And then pick I'll up come <laughs> from my room, pick up exactly just what I need. You know, that's, that's what I was about to say. We, we've got <laughs> yeah. guilt of that. It's just like, oh my God, I don't Pretty have any t-shirts. Like, okay. They're still in the laundry. I literally yeah. go to the laundry, pick up one t-shirt. One like... t-shirt. <laughs> So one way, one way to beat that is actually what John Clear is suggesting here. You don't have to fold the whole laundry. Fold one t-shirt, move it away. If you can fold one t-shirt every time you, you, you walk by the laundry machine, uh, by the end of the day, you have all your stuff folded. Now, the same concept as I was saying is discussing in, in Tiny Habit by BJ Fogg. BJ Fogg, it says that you, you need to make your habit so small that you don't need motivation. Like anybody can do it. Even yourself can do it. You know, if you need to motivate yourself to, to the point of like, hey, it's so small that even myself, I can do it. He said that, you know, one, one thing that I started using with it was I, sometimes I struggle to read, believe it or not. As, as much as we're running a podcast on, 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 on beating procrastination, on reading and self-development and self-growth and all that. Sometimes I struggle to read. Some, sometimes I struggle to pick up a book and I know this book is going to give me the information that I need to become a better person tomorrow. I still struggle to open it up. One, one thing that, that, that I used this technique for was that when I struggle to read on the days that I, I really felt like I cannot read, uh, I'll open the book and, and, and put a timer. I'll literally set a timer for two minutes and start reading. When my timer goes off, I will not do more than two minutes. When my timer goes off, I'll turn it off. Now, the advantage that that that, that gives you is, first of all, you become consistent in what you're doing. Because the goal here is not necessarily to change your habit overnight, right? Habits take time. Think about it. Every habit that you have today, you had to learn it. And it took time for it to become automatic today. So if you're trying to break a habit or to adapt a new habit, it's going to take time. Every habit will change over time. If you decide to do something about it today, it's not, it's not a quantity. It's not, it's not necessarily the quality. It's more about the quantity. How often are you doing it? And, 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 and the goal here is to show up every day. So he gives some, 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 some more, some more, some more practical example is that, Hey, if you want to lose weight and you're struggling to go to the gym, maybe you start by just dressing up in your, in your sport gear every day. You don't have to go downstairs. You don't have to leave your house. Just dress up in your sport gear and stay in it for two hours. And then, you know, remove it and, and do that every day. And now you can scale it up a little bit. You say, okay, uh, the day you have a little, some, some more strength, you say, okay, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk uh, to my car. 
and then come back to the house. And you start building on it slowly. And if you go to the gym, you don't have motivation to work, just go. Go to the gym, stay there for two minutes. After two minutes is up, drop back home. But as Adam say, are you really going to leave your house, drop to the gym, and stay there for two <laughs> minutes? You know, if you are, that's great. At least you showed up. Because most of us, we, we stop showing up. We stop learning. We stop improving. That's why we always fall into our bad habits and the things that we are trying to, de to, to destroy simply because we stop showing up. The first step into changing your habits, into adopting your habit, the two-minute rule, show up. That's what matters. Yes. Um, and a habit, you have to establish it first mm. before you can improve it. And this goes for anything, really. You have to establish something first before you can improve it. Mm -hmm. You have to get something started mm -hmm. before you can make it better. Mm -hmm. And as um, James Clear put it, and I think I took this advice even for research, mm -hmm. is that you have to standardize before you optimize. Mm -hmm. Those are very fancy terms. Mm -hmm. Just to say you need to get something started mm -hmm. before you can actually make it better. So now, going back to, to habit, and, and I can pick this up for, for research. When we, we set up an experiment, when you set up something mm -hmm. that say, hey, I'm trying to figure out um, how fast these things move under these conditions. Mm -hmm. First, I establish the conditions. Mm -hmm. Then I start iterating what are the different solutions and then I pick the optimal point. Mm. And, and and it's exactly how this stuff work. You know, First, I, I, di I didn't like algorithm, but you just reminded me of a lot of good <laughs> concept in algorithm that are getting me, are getting me pumped up right now. Because even in algorithm, you know, it's, it's the same, uh, the same approach is, you know, you, you have to test it for, for one thing you know, and then you test it for 10 things and then you can, you can scale it up. You can see, okay, how does this behave over, over a thousand things? How does this behave over 10,000 things? You know, and if, and if you get to 10,000 and you start seeing some problems, then you start scaling down again. You go back to like 5,000. How did this behave? 1,000. How did this behave? Until you figure out where exactly uh, things were failing uh, before, before you move forward. Yeah. That's, that, that was a good example, Adam. Yeah. So, and that's basically how things work in research and in real life in habit formation. Mm -hmm. That is actually, so you, you need to establish it first. Mm -hmm. You need to establish the rule of the games. Mm -hmm. If the rule of the game is two minutes, okay, let's get it two minutes. Mm -hmm. But again, think about it. What is this? And, and it, it's all about enjoying it. And I think we're going to talk about it just here in a little bit. Yeah. What is that thing that you can enjoy for just two minutes? Mm -hmm. And then um, it's done. Mm -hmm. If you won't be extending it for more mm -hmm. than the two minutes that you'll be setting up for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that is the, uh, that's the way he put it. And he say here, and I'm going to quote him. He said, the secret is to always stay below the point where it feels like work. Keep it always, make it easy. Nobody, I was actually at Watermark this past Sunday mm. and the entire sermon um, that they were speaking about was all about work. Mm -hmm. They were talking about work and, you know, like how, how do we define work? Mm -hmm. Work is a... Um, for example, is the Bible defines it like like by the sweat of your forehead that you're gonna eat and mm -hmm. so on, and um, all the positive aspect of work and the negative aspect, and they did a really quick survey around the room, like the scale of zero to ten, <laughs> how much do you actually enjoy? Um, your work. I, I can I can already imagine the results. Yeah, and um, no surprising, no surprising that really a lot of people do not 
enjoy what they do every day. Mm. So same thing, work is already a negative connotation. Mm -hmm. Keep your habit in such a way that they don't feel like you are giving an extra effort mm -hmm. to actually be doing anything. He said the best way mm -hmm. is to always stop when you are going good. And that's, that's actually uh, goes, <laughs> goes a lot in Sue as well when he talks about the fourth law, you know, making it satisfying. Because if, if a habit does not satisfy you today, you are less likely to repeat the habit. You know, it's like, you know, just growing up as kids, I don't know if you remember the, the first time you touch a hot stove, you know, it, it, it stays embedded, it, it embedded in, in your brain because you go and you touch, you know it's hot and your brain says, don't do it again. So next time when your eyes see something that is, you know, hot or whatever, you are not even tempted uh, to touch it. So James Clear goes on and he talks about now in chapter 14, uh, as we transition, I know Adam was already talking about some of it. He say how to make good habits inevitable and how to make bad habits impossible. The story that I introduced it with here, it talks about Victor, Victor Hugo. It's an interesting story. So Victor Hugo <laughs> was a writer, you know, he, he wrote a lot of good stuff, among which, you know, uh, the Notre Dame, Notre Dame, the Hunch, the Hunch book, the Hunchback of Notre Dame was published, you know, uh, by him, by, by just the, the work that he was doing and, and so many other good work that he did. If you, you've studied the French literature, I believe that you, you, you probably know a lot about, about Victor Hugo. So Victor Hugo, When, when he was, he, he had this deal with, with his publishers to write the hunchback of the Notre Dame, you know, and, and he said, they had, they had a deal. They signed the deal. They said, okay, by this date, I'm going to publish the book. Now, instead of him writing, he literally <laughs> did what most of us do, procrastinated. He went out there, was giving performance, was giving talks, was doing all this type of stuff. He was doing everything but writing. His publishers got the word and they kind, they kind of really got pissed. Now, because they already paid him money, they moved the publishing date like a little earlier than it was supposed to be. Now, it was kind of stuck because, you know, there's the law, he can get in trouble and all that. What he did was kind of, kind, kind of, kind of amazing. He said that he, he, took, he asked his assistant to take all his clothes and lock them up and only left him <laughs> with one piece of clothes. <laughs> And therefore, the guy was no yeah, longer, uh, he, he was no longer able to leave the house, right? <laughs> he, he stayed <laughs> in his room. And, and the story says that within six months, something, a work that was supposed to take him a year or two years, he finished it up in less than six months because he didn't have anywhere to go. He didn't have any clothes to wear. And, you know, he started literally just, just working on it. And it, I think this is what uh, Adam and I, I don't know if Adam has already mentioned it. He was telling me about social media. I was like, man. So James Clear said he used the same technique while, while writing this book. He said he, was gi he would give his assistant um, all the social media, access to all the social media account. What the assistant would do every Monday, she would reset all the passwords. She resets all the passwords. And she keeps them. She won't tell him. Now, he can log into his accounts because he doesn't have the password. And on Friday, she will pretty much, you know, send, email him or send, so give him, give him, uh, give him again access to all his social media accounts. And that helped him to be, uh, to be productive. And James Clear has a name for this. Uh, even in psychology, I think they have a name for it. They call it uh, the, uh, the commitment device. So what is the commitment device? The commitment device is a choice that you make in the present that will control your actions in the future. And this is what we were talking about earlier, to be intentional about what you're going to do when you get bored, you know, if, and, and you, you need, and that's why we, we encourage you to track your habits, right? If you have a problem with your phone, um, ask yourself the question, Why, what pushes me to use my phone? Or when do I use my phone the most? Uh, I'm in bed, I can't sleep, I'm using my phone. Or I'm in class, I'm bored, I'm using my phone. Or this and that. Once you identify that, you can now create a commitment device saying that, okay, when this happens in the near future, instead of me going back to my phone or instead of me going back to, to this old habit that I've, I'm trying to, 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 to get rid of, this is what I will do. And that's pretty much what Victor Hugo did and, uh, and, and James Clear as well who are writing this book. Yeah, and commitment devices are such important stuff. 
um, because there's stuff that actually send you mm. to specifically get stuff done. I was I was talking to a friend. His name is Josh at um, at Watermark at, at the porch. I think yeah, it was it was on Tuesday night. Uh, we we're coming out of the you know, coming out of the service there. Um, at, unfortunately, it was Dave, David Marvin's last day at, as the porch leader, so that was a, a bit sad. Um, yeah. We I mean, it's sad to see him go. He's he's been such a a great um, not just an inspiration, but such a great teacher and a great leader. Mm-hmm of that organization and I'm looking forward to whoever is coming next mm. um, teaching there. But um, that's Tuesday, I was talking to a friend um, mm. and I was telling Josh about my struggles with um, my cell phone use mm. that for my research at least I had been really struggling with my with, with my phone because every quick break, every time my mind, every time I struggle mm-hmm thinking about research or trying to create a breakthrough, mm-hmm. I tend not to be creating a breakthrough anymore. You just Instead, go back to... I just mm. go to my phone and until I can, okay, I'm going later on, I'm going to think of something else. And then I completely switch instead of like actually taking the pain of thinking deeply mm-hmm. that my research actually requires. And he, he mentioned a commitment device, actually, that I'm thinking I'm going to buy for myself. Mm. It's a call. It's called a phone lock. Mm. It's a physical box that cost about, I think, it was nineteen ninety nine. Mm. It's only it, it has a timer on it. You put your <laughs> phone in there. It has a timer on it. You can have only specific apps that you can have access to. Wow! And once you put your phone inside, mm-hmm. it has an access where you can plug in your charger. So your phone is not dead, hmm. but it only has about, um, you can only ro- override it four times in its lifetime. Wow. So you speak about commitment devices. <laughs> <laughs> That's one. If you say that you're going to focus hmm. for the next 20 minutes mm-hmm. and you've set a timer for 20 minutes, you're going to not be using your phone for 20 minutes. Hmm. And I think I think that's that might come in as a solution um, for me, because especially when I'm trying to actually automate mm. the the habit, because yeah. it, it's I mean when you try to learn and you have once you have automated that and uh, you have killed the craving, mm-hmm. it can make a whole difference mm. when you start getting satisfaction in actually work. Mm. Again, that's what I was the preaching from yesterday, from the from Sunday at the at Watermark is work. Mm. Once you've actually put, once you've actually start putting all your attention and you have start finding your satisfaction mm. in the work that you do. You know, even God, when he created earth, it was so much work. Mm-hmm. But he looked at it, he'll say, this is good. Right. Yeah. So it, it was a good thing. And it's it, the same thing. I'm starting to look at okay until i'm gonna start automating these different keys and these different cues Mm -hmm. to isolate my phone Mm -hmm. in such a way that at a certain point it has become a habit it's like i don't need that commitment device anymore Mm -hmm. all i now it's just it's not a part of my thinking Mm -hmm. it's something that it has a specific time and i don't have to struggle with anymore and i think these commitment devices can be in so many things you can look at um uh, like like brow like blo- blocker or browsers oh, for your browsers yeah for your browsers mm-hmm. um you can look at i think for um i think even i don't know if maybe microsoft also does a, a heavy but for macbook there is this um time on your computer where it's like it gives you like a break mm-hmm. where your computer just shut down and it sets a timer and after those five minutes, I mean, you cannot overload, like, you, I don't think there's an option for you to, to override to, it. Uh, override it. Mm. So it's just, you have to actually stay with it. Mm. Which which kind of leads me to, to the question of the week, right? What, what are you currently struggling with and that you want to stop doing? Wh- whatever it is, oh, write it down. 
And now I want you to we, we want you to spend some time brainstorming this, right? What are the different methods or what are the different commitment devices you can use to make this habit difficult for you to do, right? What are the things that you can make or you can do to make this habit difficult for you to 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 do? Um, back in the days when when I migrated to the United States in 2013, I, I used to drink a lot of sodas. I didn't have any problems with them until you know you start learning, you grow, you learn, and you understand uh, all all the um, all the problems that can come can come with too much sugar in your body. By the time I realized it, it was kind of too late because, you know, I was drinking a few of them a day and stopping drastically was going to be a little difficult. One one thing, and I think I shared this before on the podcast that we did, I, I simply stopped buying sodas. I simply stopped having sodas in my fridge. I replaced sodas with, with juice and, and bottled waters and, and, and stuff like that. So every time, you know, and and, and, and I mentioned something very important. Uh, every time I struggled, every time I was stuck on something, sodas became kind of my medication, you know, uh, where I'll just go up in the fridge, pop up soda without even thinking, just like, oh, this is what I always do when I'm struggling. And it, it comes the same way with phones that you, you're thinking like, why am I using, why am I addicted too much to my phone? Is it because you're standing on the line, you don't have anything to do, you pick up your phone. You, you're in a bus or you're in a taxi or you're driving your own car, you stand, you're standing in the traffic, you pick up your phone. Your phone has become that place where you go every time you want to feel you are tempted space in your mind and and the only way to break that is to make it harder and more difficult for me as adam uh, was giving example about that commitment device where you literally uh, i don't know if i'll go to that extreme but you know what is what has worked so far for me just turning off my phone and living in the living room even when i'm tempted to go pick up my phone the time for me to to know to turn on my phone and unlock it and all that all that process is become so harder that sometimes it's that it's not even worth uh, going to pick it up. And then James Clear talks about something else here. The the benefit of commitment device is that it gives you some type of automation. Um Chris Bailey in, in Hyperfocus talks about something, he calls it autopilot. And, and, and this is pretty much what most of us do, right? We don't think a lot about our habits, especially the, the ones that we're trying to break, the bad habits like watching Netflix or being on your phone all the time or being on TikTok, making videos sometimes that make sense and sometimes that do not make any sense at all. You know, you are so committed to that that you no longer have to think before doing some of this stuff. And that's the danger of automation. Automation is great when it's working positively for you, but when it starts working against you, automation becomes very dangerous and you kind of have to stop it. Now, on the positive side, James Clear talks about automation in the sense that if there's something you're struggling with, like saving money, try to automate it. There's one strategy, especially about saving money that I would just like to share that I've used, which has helped me a lot, right? Automate your saving. Do not do not try to 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 do manual saving. It does not work. My big brother is <laughs> is probably the best advice on finances that you can ever get from anybody, because he's he's been through a lot. You know, especially in America with debt and debt management and all that, that he's learned some of the lessons that I do not need to go through the same experience to learn those lessons. I'll just be I'll just take his word for it. You know, <laughs> he told me one thing. He said, "What you don't see." in your bank account is not yours. In other words, it told me, if you're trying to save money from what is coming from your paycheck and it's already made it in your bank account, you're going to struggle a lot. Just, it told me, consider your saving like taxes. You know why we don't think about taxes? They cut, they cut, you know, they cut significant amount of taxes. <laughs> Most people that have reached a certain bracket of income or even a lower bracket of income, we tell you, hey, they cut a lot of taxes. Sometimes you make a hundred dollars and you know, $30 we're going to taxes, but we don't think about it. You just get $70 and you use the $70 as if nothing has ever happened. Why does that happen? Because you do not see that money. The money is taken before it makes it to your bank account. I say treat your saving the same way. So one of the techniques that I, I started using was, especially for my emergency funds, for me to build my emergency fund to, to the point where I was kind of like feeling comfortable enough to quit my job and, and just be, be, be at home until I found something better, was that I set up from my paycheck. 
my paycheck, as soon as it comes, I'll just redirect it to another bank. And the only way I could get money from that bank was to actually physically go to the bank, talk to a tailor, in order for them to give you the bank. You may think to yourself, Mark, don't you think that's that's not very smart? Yeah, it's probably not very smart if, if that's the money that you use for your groceries or pay your rent or whatever. But if you're trying to build some emergency funds that you can access whenever you want, you know, it, it worked for me. Because the pain of just, you know, if I want to buy something on eBay and I have to go all the way, drive for about 20, 20 25 minutes, to talk to a tailor in order for them to give me the money, it's just not worth it. And I'm just like, is this purchase even worth it in the first place? Yeah, and 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 I think what I've actually been doing, um, yeah, I've, I've for my finances, I've been automating it as well hmm. uh, for the last several months, and I've been using. I think I, I you see, <laughs> social media is just the way it works. It's like. You think about something and directly you get a pop up. Uh, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, it really is. It's it's I don't know how they do it, but they are they are very efficient. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking about like saving and all that stuff. Hmm. There's this app. It's called Albert. Um, and um, not to endorse them by any means, but it just <laughs> to say like what I've been, what I've been using. Mm -hmm. Um, then I just automated everything over there and. The way they actually take money from my savings account, so I like my I always save money in my savings account. But I'm like, oh, what happening to my money? One, one day, actually, I almost called my bank. Mm. I was like, yeah, there's something is somewhere. <laughs> my still your money. And then away. I just found out that oh yeah, I'm actually saving mm. um, money over there. Mm -hmm. And I think here, um, James Clear is saying like, yeah, you can leverage the power of technology. Mm -hmm to actually come come in and, and, and play such a huge role hmm. because technology can create a level of convenience that enables you um, to act on your smallness, whims, and de desires. Hmm. Excuse me. Yeah, it's um, technology helps you automate a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Technology helps you create reminders. We don't need a lot of physical alarms because mm -hmm. our phone have alarms. Yeah. Technology can help you actually drive in your habits. Mm -hmm. You just have to actually be intentional. And that's why like, all of the stuff even that we've been teaching or talking about on this podcast, mm -hmm. it's all about intentionality. Mm -hmm. You have to be intentional mm -hmm. for you to make that change mm -hmm. that you are looking for. Yeah. Uh, and then to uh, to wrap this up as we, we're finishing up today's, today's episode, uh, John Skrier, he makes one statistics here. Uh, one, he gives some of the statistics here toward the end of this chapter, which I, I think they are kind of scary, but they're also worth sharing. He said that the average person spends over two hours on social media every day. Uh, Factor the in, that's about 600 plus hours a year just on social media. Now, my question is, how much do you learn from the social media? And the second question is, was it, what if you invest 600 hours in a gym? Or what if you invest 600 hours in, 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 you know, in your finance? What if you invest 600 hours doing something actually more productive? You know, there is, there is this, statistic, uh, there's this uh, statistic that have, have, been, um, have been published out there. A lot of people talk about it, that it takes 10,000 hours to master something. Right. 10,000 hours. If we, we take two hours a day, that's probably about 15, 16 years, just two hours of using two hours a day for, for maybe less than that. Maybe, maybe less than that. Maybe 14 years at most, you know, now think about this. You may think 14 years is a lot of years, right? Is a lot of time from today. The reality, 14 years will pass by, whether you learn or you don't learn 14 years, we just pass by. Why, sure. why, why don't we, don't we just start investing the time that we are wasting on social media or whatever to better your craft, to better your skill. You know, and I, I'll say this very carefully. I'll really say this very carefully. And it probably just applies to me, but I think that a lot of us, we, we, we don't get the job we desire, not because the job is not available, but because our skills are not to the level that the job will look for us, right? I'll explain what I mean by this. If you are so good at what you do, 
like you are really, really good at what you do. At some point, people start looking for you. I, I think about yeah. this always in terms of like someone like Dr. Mukwege. You can say all you want about medicine in Congo or, you know, uh, the med MD in Congo. You can say, well, they don't have the standard of the doctors in America. They don't have the standard of the doctors in Australia or, or China. You can say all you want. But you cannot deny the fact that Dr. Mukwege, a Nobel Prize winner, who was practicing his all medicine stuff in a village in South Kivu in Eastern Congo, today is renowned and recognized in the whole world as being one of the best surgeons there is. They, 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 they even gave him the nickname of the man who repairs women. Why wouldn't a doctor like that be you know, given an opportunity in America because the dude has better his craft until he has become invaluable. I believe, I personally believe that if you become so good at what you do, people will look for you. Jobs will look for you and opportunities will look for you because there's just a point where they cannot deny they cannot deny you opportunity because of how good you are. That's just my personal belief. I know you, we don't have to, 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 to completely agree on this, but I believe personally that regardless of where you live, regardless of what you do, if you are really good at what you do, people will look for you. Yeah, and it's all come from automating your behavior positively, using that to your own advantage, using the time. And this is, I'm very guilty of it and I'm, I've been working on it. And the good thing that I'm very positive about is the fact that it's, I'm, it's, it's directly, I'm consciously doing stuff. Hmm. So I am, I'm coming from a transition of like, it's a bad habit that I know it's a bad habit. Mm -hmm. And before I'm doing it, I am claiming it to be a bad habit. And I'm starting to make change on that bad habit. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, and, and um, my brain is consistently looking for solution to resolve the bad habit. Mm -hmm. And if I can now come from where I have to think to, to I have to be making efforts mm -hmm. and I start making it a way easier. And I start locking it, like automating a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. into something that is actually a behavior that can stay with me. And I can actually start taking advantage of all of this time. Mm. Because one thing that's I, that, 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 that I know for sure, and this is, this is true, is that I'm one of the people who strongly believe in their potential. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can be a very positive thing. Most of the time it is. But sometimes it can also be, um, it can give you some type of uncontrolled optimism. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, you know, just like you you consistently, you have a firm assurance that things just going to be fine. To the point where you don't focus on the design of those things to be best and not just be fine. Mm -hmm. Then what would happen is you start getting by every single day. Right. Instead of actually being in charge mm. of your habits and your life. And that is one thing that's, it's one of the, my biggest um, fears mm. is the fact that I don't want to be in a condition where things are just fine. I want to be at the condition where I'm thriving. And you're giving your very and, best. And I'm giving my very best. And I am actually at the top of where I want to be, like in everything. Mm -hmm. If it's in my field, if there are PhD students at the same level as me, I'm at the top of whatever it is. And actually, that's what I've been instructed. That's what I've been trained for ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. My daddy repeated it a million times. There are kids out there. There are general kids out there. There are kids in your school. You are not every kid. Mm -hmm. You are the best mm -hmm. that there is. You are getting the best care, the best education, the best everything. You are supposed to be the best. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and I believe that with all, with all these lessons that um, James Clear has, has put in, in in this book, and especially on this um, on this third law of behavior change, of um, make it easy mm -hmm. by making it easy or reversing a bad behavior. By, by making it, it impossible or very difficult, mm -hmm. 
And I, I think that um, there are a lot of tools that could actually, as, as Mark said, if you put them into application, can bring you to become the best there is. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, with, 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 with those comments that we'll be, uh, we'll be ending our podcast today, uh, next next week, uh, most, most possibly next week, we'll probably be having David Friedman in the next week or in the next two weeks. We put a post out there to tell you a little bit about his background. Uh, we talk a lot about business, about, you know, going into 2023, especially if you're a business owner. What are the things that you need to look at? You know, he, he has this wonderful uh, book that he's writing. He'll share with us some of the laws about, about the book that he's writing and um and i believe that we have a great time just so uh, talking and learning from from really a, a very successful businessman who's just now spending his time uh pouring back into the lives of others and if you want to start a business i'll uh, tune in and, and let's uh, hear more from him but we give you a confirmation if we will be hearing next week with them or if we we hear the week after that we may or may not hear on tuesday we we definitely let you uh well let you let you know on our social media platforms so if we record with them, then we probably were here sometimes next week, but must probably not, not on Tuesday, but we definitely confirm before, before everything. So uh, follow us on our Instagram. If you are new to this podcast, uh, do not forget to subscribe on our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. It's the only way that we, uh, uh, we, we, you know, we, we get this message to more people and we grow this community of leaders and readers and people who want to improve and make themselves better. So next week, if we do record and continue finishing up our, our James Clear Atomic Habits book, we'll be talking about the fourth law, how to make your habits satisfying. Uh, that's what we help you to repeat those habits. If the habits are satisfying, you definitely get back to them. Uh, our giveaway is going on we talked about it at the beginning of this episode we will continue to do that and the winner will be announced on december 25th uh, anything else Ada? no i think that's all we have and really right. thank you so much for tuning in today thank you so much it was so great having you today and y'all have a wonderful one and god bless you bye-bye